silence for a moment here a second that lasts a year the wind blows all else is still it's yet I feel a cold chill do they know who they have killed? Whose void will never be filled? Oh, Abbas, how could they do this to My name is Ali Al Hakim, age 21, second year optometry student at Bradford University, and I'm a servant and reciter of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim wassalam, inshallah. I started reciting Latmiyat, Noha, eulogy at the age of 10, where I recited my first Noha, Latmiya in front of a crowd of about a hundred people in Dar al Islam, Manchester. And I recited, um, it was the opening part for the Latum, which is Ahsan Wam Saba. It's like the Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein in our Pakistani communities, just to start it off. And I remember that when I first recited it, I was a bit nervous, so I couldn't really hold the paper with one hand. So I had to use both hands to hold the paper, just to make sure the paper doesn't fall. And at the same time, I couldn't really look at the people in the eye because I was a bit scared. So I just focused on the paper. <clears throat> that was my beginning. And then later, I looked at the clip and, you know, it was okay. But there was a lot of improvement. So that's how I started off my journey. The people who inspired me and really who I saw as an icon when I started reciting was Mullah Basim Karbalai. They used to bring his... CDs to Dar al Islam, as well as my dad when he used to go to Iraq and come back, he used to bring Basim Karbalais as well as Mullah Jalil. They used to bring their CDs um, and I used to listen to them and copy them. Also, my dad himself, he's a reciter. When he was um, small in Basra, he used to be a Quran reciter. When he came to the UK, he started doing Latmiyat. So when he used to read Dar al Islam, I used to also copy him. So I would say that those are the people who inspired me to recite Latmiyat at such a young age. And um, so then I used them as a, um, as a guide to improve my vocals. When I started reciting, I didn't really start reciting in English straight away. For the first couple of years, I used to recite in Arabic because there wasn't really English recitations going on. I couldn't really, you know, recite in English because the crowd that I used to recite were mainly Arabs. So obviously I'd recite Arabic and my mother is the one who guided me and taught me how to recite um, and to read Arabic. She used to sit down and teach me, right, this is how you do this part, this is this how you do this part. And um, I remember that when I started off, I was very slow. Like one Latmiya, it took me approximately, the first Latmiya I did took me three months to learn. The next Latmiya, one month. The one after that, two weeks. The one after that, one week. And from that, I used to learn the Latmiya the night before the majlis. So alhamdulillah, there was a quick progress in learning of how to recite Arabic. At the age of 12, I, a, a famous lecturer called Sayyid uh, Jasim Tawar Jawi came to Manchester to do a lecture. After him, I was the one who's gonna, who was doing the Latmiyat. And when I finished, he told me that, he, you know, alhamdulillah, very good. And he motivated me to continue. After that, he gave me a book of a poet and he signed it. And it really did inspire me to keep on going because of a person of such caliber telling me that I'm good, you know, I was, 
I was still at the early ages and I wasn't really reciting properly, but it really did inspire me and that's what kept me going. Face, look at his divine face, such great elegance from the peak of eloquence. Oh, Ali Haidari, oh, Ali Haidari, louder. Forget this moment, it is fine. We will never forget the chosen, his eternal beauty. Amen across the sea, a single seed that could breed a thousand great trees. Oh, Ali, I know. You may have been standing on the desert of proof But you chose not to enter the garden of truth You saw the hand risen With your ears you listened As the sealed godly words had been revealed Oh, Ali when I met the Sayyid, I was in high school, and during high school, um, I was very active in school. So, academically, I used to revise every night, approximately an hour and a half to two hours. At the same time, I used to um, be very active in the extracurricular activities, especially the sports department, where I was so involved with all the sports, so I didn't really focus on just one sport. It was basketball, um, rugby, athletics, football. And through that, they elected me to become the sports captain of the school. And the school itself was a sports college. So Alhamdulillah, it was, it was really beneficial for me because I used to interact a lot with the adults, with the um, teachers. And through that, I gained communication skills, listening skills. And that actually benefited me with my Latum recitation world because I could use those skills that I learned from school and apply them so it enhances my professionalism in front of the audience. So not only did I, um, not only was I was a sports captain, I was really involved with um, my academic work because I, I wanted to have um, a good future, inshallah. So um, alhamdulillah, at the end of high school, I ended up with 10 A stars and 4 A's. That was the end of high school. So alhamdulillah, I was very active. But during that time, at the same time, I continued with my, my majalis. But in high school, I realized there was a big demand for Majalis Latum in the English language because the communities that we have in Manchester, which is where I'm based, it's a mixed cultural community. So we have the Iraqis, we have the um, we have some Khajas, we have some Pakistanis, we have the Iranians. It's a big mixture. And what they started doing is lectures in English. But after the English lecture, you also need an English Latmiya. Otherwise, if you start reciting in Arabic, some of the audience won't understand what you're saying, hence why I started reciting in English. It was very difficult to start with because I didn't understand the concept of syllables in the poem. But through practice, through practice, um, Alhamdulillah, we established ourselves. During that time, the only poet that I used to write for me was my brother, Sayyid Saeed Al-Hakim. He used to write poems for me and we used to like experiment with them. We're still an experimental process in time. Yes, yeah, so Alhamdulillah, me and my brother, we were progressing and improving our poetry both through the tunes. At that stage, I still copied the main reciters. I didn't make up my own tunes. I was still learning from the people who were the pioneers in Arabic reciting. I used to get the tune and copy it into the English language and try and fit the syllables. And it was very difficult oh to do, Qasim, but Alhamdulillah, we progressed. Oh my Qasim, I can't let you go. Oh my Qasim, oh my Qasim, I can't let you go uh, don't say that you are an orphan you are my own son I told your father that I will always keep you safe how can I say yes when I know what will then happen Oh, 
was in my cons, bad to see you drained all in blood. Oh my gosh, him. Oh my gosh, raise your arms. Oh my gosh, him. I can't let you go. Oh my gosh, mashallah. After high school, I went to college and I studied maths, chemistry, physics, bi and biology. And that was, it was very intense. I would say that college was the most difficult part of my life academically because I kept the four subjects on, it's two years in college in the UK um, for these subjects and I kept both, all four of them the second year. So it was a bit hectic, but alhamdulillah we progressed. After my first year in college, I travelled to Iraq, Basra, where I went to Dulfaqar Studios, who's, o who, who's owned by Mullah Mahdi Zainabi. And I met him and I recorded my first album called Nahib Al Koon, which means the morning world in English. And it was a mixture of English and Arabic. And through that, I met Mullah Mahdi and I met the people who he works with. And alhamdulillah, they they motivated me because I, I didn't really know what I was doing because it was the first time me recording in a studio but it made me feel comfortable and through that Alhamdulillah we have a good relationship when it comes to the service of Ahl al-Bayt where I've been coming to him every year to record in English Alhamdulillah Four days you did not have any water to drink The thirst makes it hard for any of us to think Yet you can't Continued with the intentions you came Even though you knew that your death would come The same O oh, Hussein's struggles in Karbala Then I came back to the UK and I distributed the CDs And people really enjoyed it and they told me to progress and keep them recorded in English so alhamdulillah we kept them progressing. After college I went to university and I'm currently studying optometry at Bradford University just finished second year alhamdulillah and um, during that time I met uh, a person called Sadiq Damani. Sadiq Damani is I'd say a unique uh, individual. Um, before Matt Sadiq, I met other poets, um, Say, Sayyid Wafiq Abidi, Raza Abbas Rizvi, um, Tiba Sa'dun from uh, Michigan, and uh, Muhammad Huda, various, recite, uh, various poets which I worked with. But then I met Sadiq Damani, a very unique person because he's not only a poet, he's a reciter as well, a lecturer, and a host. So it's like a combination of, uh, you know, it has a combination of skills which is very useful you know for us youth so alhamdulillah and he when i met him he really liked the work that i did in the studios but he told me to continue to progress and he told me right you, you need to improve it with recitations on the member with this you need you need to improve and stop doing this and do this you know he, he corrected me and at the same time in the studio so it's not only the majority told me how to improve in a studio and we kept on working with him and we progressed and through him my majalis expanded so not only did i start reciting in um, the north of England, we progressed to middle of England, which is in Birmingham, as well as London, and through that we kept on progressing. Then, last Muharram 2014, I travelled to Michigan, USA to for Muharram 10 nights, which actually became 12 nights, where I met um, humble people, very, very uh, pious people, Sheikh Ilahi is well as the people that work in the mosque, very, 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 alhamdulillah. They, they made me feel welcome when I came there. And we read 10 nights in Muharram, and I brought my friend Muhammad Mahabis, who's a very number one martyr, mashaAllah. He comes with me in our travels um, around the UK to motivate and give the passion of the majlis so people can do martyr and azada of Aba Abdullah Hussein in the way that it truly should be done. So he came with me, and we motivated the youth there, as well as the adults, to do latam, and alhamdulillah, it was really good. As we expanded to America um, and the UK, our work, not only on the member, but as well as the studio work, expanded on a national and international scale. And Alhamdulillah, many people enjoyed the work that we did, but there's always room for improvement, which is why I always come back to Sadiq asking him, Habibi, where can we, how can we improve on this Latmiya? 
on the member of Imam Hussein, the performance both vocally as well as in front of the people, how can I improve with that aspect? So I always come back and refer to him, alhamdulillah, and may Allah prolong his life. Tragedy continues and it goes on to Qasim alayhi salam. Qasim, when he is in Karbala, he looks around and he realizes now is his time. Qasim goes to Al Hussein, his uncle, and he says, Oh, my uncle, let's now be the time where I go and defend you. Imam Al Hussein gave a promise to Al Hassan that I will protect your son. I will protect your son, my nephew Qasim. Imam Al Hussein cannot say no. He cannot say no. He has to say no. My apologies. He has to say no. But then Qasim comes forward. Qasim comes forward with a letter. And this letter is from Al Hassan saying, Oh Hussein, on that day when you call out Halmin Nasir and Yansurna, and no one comes to you except my Qasim to represent me. But you know what the tragedy of Al Qasim is? It's when Imam Al Hussein starts to tie the turban around his head. Scholars say that there are two things with regard to this turban. Scholars say that the first use of this turban was to show that he was the son of Allah Hassan. That's mark of the Arab, the pure Arab. And the second they say, the second part of that turban, they say that's because Al Qasim was so young, the helmet would not fit Al Qasim. After I came back from Muharram in USA, we, they told me to come back for Arba'in, so then I came back for Arba'in and then also we, came, we continued the service of Imam Hussein and inshallah may we continue to expand with the team of poets as well as other reciters that I met along the way and we may the English language for lecturing as well as recitations expand we don't want only three or four reciters in English and that's it, no, on the contrary it would be preferable if there's an army of reciters and when it comes to Muharram there's a, there's a reciter in every majlis after the lecture reciting in English so then people understand what's going on and the tragedy of Imam Hussein in the English language because it's the universal language and may people and that's basically what we're trying to do what we're doing right now all that we're doing right now is we're promoting the Aza of Imam Hussein in the English language so we may hopefully inspire others to be the youth or people who are older to recite in English so people understand English is the universal language so if we all start reciting in English everyone's going to understand what's going on so there'll be there will be a reciter after every majlis after the lecture and that's my aim inshallah it can't be just three or four reciters in English and that's it no the contrary it needs to be you know 20 30 40 reciters that travel the world and serve the Ahlul Bayt in the English language and that's very important because in the Western world that's the way forward and obviously, we keep our cultural heritage, so we do recite sometimes no has in Latmiyads in Urdu, in um, Gujarati, in Arabic. We keep the cultural uh, background, inshallah. So that's the aim at the end of the day. My aim is hopefully to continue to recite in the English language, both on the member of Imam Hussein as well as in the studios. Obviously, as you know, Alhamdulillah, as the years progressed, we've, we've expanded to other studios in Kuwait in Basra, in London, and inshallah we continue to, pro to progress with the khadama of Imam Hussein, both in the studios and the, uh, the member inshallah. So like, as I said before, inshallah our aim is to have an army of reciters in English, that's my, my true aim. So I'm hoping in the near future to have a camp or you know some kind of day or couple of days we're having, we, we gather people who are motivated and want to recite for the Ahlul Bayt in the English language we come sit down we teach them the basics so when you're in the member of Imam Hussein how do you recite how do you look at the people building your confidence um, when to look at the people how to motivate them then when you go record in the studio it, it has its own skill set so just because you might be a fantastic reciter on the member of Imam Hussein and you're very confident doesn't mean that you're going to be very good in a studio when you record um, studio work it's completely different you need a different skill set where you need to be properly on pace and there's a lot of detail with it and inshallah that's what we're hoping to do in the camp to record um, people reciting and it's, we want to progress so inshallah that's one of the objectives that I have my voice echoing as I shout his name
I keep shouting, but it is all in vain. What did they do to you, brother Hussein? Zainab, 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 ya Zainab, 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 ya Zainab. I look around and there's something I see. I walk closer, but then reality appears suddenly, and it then hits me. That's the form I can see very vaguely. Is a headless form a beaten body? The khadama of Imam Hussein is very important because through Imam Hussein the message of Islam is spread and I personally believe a very very beneficial way an effective way of serving Imam Hussein and inspiring people to become more religious in nearness to Allah is through the Matam Latmiya Noha Azadari Anashid Dua and Quran. These are the things which will truly, truly penetrate into the hearts of the of the individuals who are listening. I personally went through a journey where as I started of ten years old and now I'm twenty one, these last eleven years I would say that without Imam Hussein and without the Latmiyat which I learned and the team that work with me, I wouldn't be where I am right now. And through the Latm and the Noha, it shaped my life. And I'm hoping that people who want to be inspired, they want to feel that spiritual feeling of closeness to Allah and you want to cry, you want to cry for the Ahlul Bayt on an Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura. You want to serve the Ahlul Bayt. And a very effective way of doing that is through the Latmiyat of Imam Hussein. People might not see it as it being a very important thing. They might say, no, let's only do lectures and lectures is more than enough in the Majlis. On the contrary, it is the Latm of Imam Hussein which will penetrate the hearts. Don't get me wrong, lecturing is very, very important because it's the knowledge that you grasp which gives you an understanding of how to be a better person. But through the Latmiyat, the Latmiyat are also an institute of education for the events that happened in Karbala. Not only that, the Latmiyat are the ones, the Latmiyat are the things which inspire a person to become a better individual and human being and you it gives you that spiritual feeling and closeness to Allah. I can't stress enough how important it is to listen and to recite for the service of Ahlul Bayt. Not only males, I encourage the, our sisters to become established, established reciters in the English language and let them spread the message of the Ahlul Bayt within the uh, within their communities. Let them do majalis for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Let them have English um, female lectures and after that English female recitals to inspire the young sisters so then they may serve Imam Hussein in a much more you know grand uh, and, and up the scale for the service of Imam Hussein. It doesn't need to be only males. Contrary, females as well. And let's serve Imam Hussein on an international scale. Let's spread the message of Imam Hussein. Alhamdulillah, in the UK, the message of Ahlul Bayt is being spread on, in, a, in a fast rate. But let's make it exponential rate. Why not? We have the capabilities. Us as Shia of Amir al-Mu'mineen, we have the passion and the flair. Alhamdulillah, we've been guided on the Salat al-Mustaqim. Why can't we continue to serve the Ahlul Bayt in the way that they truly should be served? I truly, truly hope that people get the message that I'm trying to get across. Let the majalis of Imam Hussein spread. Whoever wants to donate, donate. Whoever wants to serve, let them serve. And let's expand the madrasa, the uh, 
educational institute of Imam Hussein and let's spread it onto an international scale. Whoever wants to serve, let them serve. Let them serve. And I encourage the adults, if they can motivate their youth to recite. Don't, don't tell them, no, it's okay, you don't need to recite. You can listen to the lecture. No, encourage them to recite. And I, um, I kindly ask my fellow reciting um, brothers, my fellow um, Radud friends, if they can inspire the youth and if a young child comes to them and tells them, can you read my poem? Tell them, no problem, I will read your poem. It will inspire that young child to continue to read and recite. If he wants to recite, give this young child a small op an opportunity to recite. Alhamdulillah, I was blessed with the opportunity and through that I progressed. I truly encourage um, my fellow reciting brothers to encourage the younger generation to continue to recite and give them that opportunity. Oh, <laughs>